In this part of my video series about book folding techniques, I am going to straighten up the biggest misconceptions concerning book art patterns, that is, their book sizes. Some people believe that for a specific pattern, there is only one size of book for which the pattern can look good, and they are confused seeing that Nailit offers choices regarding book sizes. Here you will find hints to choose the right book to get the optimal result. You will find out which book is more suitable for the different methods, and when to use which book and method. You will find a number of good pieces of advice, so keep watching. This video is a continuation of the tutorial series, and I will be using terms that I explained in previous videos. Therefore, it is recommended to watch them first. You can find links to them in the description below. If you have ever encountered nail it book art patterns, you know that in one file you can find a huge range of possible book sizes. The reason for this is that it makes it easy for you to find a fitting book for your pattern and to get amazing results. The main reason why I offer so many sizes is that I want to give you the opportunity to use any book available to you. It is not necessary to buy a specific book only to fit to the pattern. I want people to choose the right pattern size to match their book, not to look for the right book to match their pattern. Using old books and upcycling them instead of dumping them was my main drive to creating book art patterns. In the section What you need in the Nailed Instructions, it is explained how to match a pattern to your book. But I am going to recapture the principles here. You always have to use a pattern for fewer pages or the same number of pages as your book. The same stands for the height. The pattern height needs to be smaller or the same as your book height, more accurately the leaf height of your book. Although in theory you can use any book you want for any book art project, I have three general recommendations for you about the book. First, the strongest recommendation is to use hardback books. In the past I used a few softback books and they turned out completely fine. But hardback books are more sturdy and in most cases they do present better. Also, the spine of softback books may bend too much, leading to the book being too far open for cut and fold methods. The other problem with softback books is that they are glued, not sewn, and that takes us to point two. Second, if you have a choice, use books which are additionally sewn, not only glued. Although most hardback books I have seen had been sewn, a few of them were only glued. Usually books with tissue paper are only glued, like bibles or dictionaries. The risk with these books is that the sheets may get loose. Third, the last recommendation is more of a personal preference and you do not have to follow it. Avoid tissue paper books. This is not only due to the issue I just mentioned, but mostly because they usually have an enormous number of pages. The huge amount of pages will significantly increase the time you spend on the project, but the results may not change much, unless the pattern you chose is extremely detailed and you want to preserve all those tiny details. If you do not have any time constraints and you are very patient, ignore this recommendation and go ahead if you want to use such a book. The next criteria for how to choose a book to create your book art pattern are more important for some methods than for others. First, their thickness. Second, the shape of the foredge. And third, if they contain images or photos. For methods 3 and 4, that is the cut only methods, always choose thick books. The thicker, the better. Methods 3 and 4 do not change the original thickness of the book through the process. So, if your book is thin, the subject of the pattern will also be thin, meaning elongated. And that may not be the desired effect. By thick, I mean the ratio of the book's width to its height. The rule of thumb is that the thickness should be around or more than 0.4. If you do not want to calculate the ratio, simply use your imagination and depict the subject on the foredge of your book. Here I have two books. Look at them and try to guess which one is thicker, meaning on which one the book art pattern would be less stretched, less elongated. The first book is 2.8 cm wide and 25 cm tall. The second one is 2.5 cm wide and 18.5 cm tall. It looks like the first one is slightly wider than the second one. But when we calculate the ratio of width to height, meaning we divide the width by the height, we see that the ratio of the first one is 0.11 whereas the ratio of the second one is 0.14. This means that for our purposes, the second book is thicker than the first one, even though the first one is wider. You do not have to calculate anything if you don't want to when choosing your book. The human eye is good enough to approximate, and I bet you guessed correctly that the second book is thicker than the first one. 
What is also extremely important to remember is that the number of pages doesn't necessarily correspond to the book's width. Here I have two other books. As you can see, the first one is half the width of the second one. Yet the first book has over 800 pages, whereas the second one has only a bit over 300 pages. For methods 1 and 2, essentially every book thickness is good, as long as its height and number of pages is equal to or higher than that of the pattern. The trick with these methods is that if your book is very thin, you should fold the pages deep, so that at the end your book is much wider than the initial width of your book. If your book is thick, the folds should be shallow, to avoid the book being opened too far. Ideally, the shape of the foredge, that is, the side opposite to the spine, should be flat, no matter which method you use. However, for methods 1 and 2, where every leaf and tub is folded, you won't see the foredge in the final result. Therefore, imperfections in the foredge can be masked. Nevertheless, if your foredge is uneven, it will be harder to draw the cut and reference lines in the correct place, so that they are in the same place for every sheet. If you use a method where the foredge of your book is visible, but it has dirty spots, you can paint it before starting. Dry the book in a standing position with spaces between the leaves, so they don't stick to each other once the paint dries. If your book has images or photos, this needs another consideration. This is irrelevant for cut-only methods, meaning methods 3 and 4, as long as the photos are not printed on a different kind of paper, like photographic paper, which can be visible from the foredge side. For other methods, however, Photos are an important factor to consider when choosing a book. If an image is only on one side of a sheet, and the paper is not of a different kind, you should choose the direction in which you fold the sheet such that the image is on the side which is covered by the fold. On the other hand, if images are on both sides, but there are not many pages with illustrations, you should consider removing those pages. As long as the book is soon, removing the pages shouldn't destroy the book's integrity but remove them carefully. Lastly, if a book has a significant number of pages with images on both sides, or you can't or don't want to remove any sheets, it is better not to use such a book for cut and fold techniques. Alternatively, if your book has margins on every leaf, you can fold it such that the creases are only in the margin areas. This will produce a unique result, but your book shouldn't be too thin in this case. In a situation when you want to use a specific book, which you want to give as a present or you still want to read it, and thus you do not want to destroy it, the best options are methods 3, 4, 5 and 6. In this case, you shouldn't cut deeper than the margin, but you need to remember that methods 3 and 4 most of the time require thick books. If your book is not thick enough, use method 5 or 6. You can even still use the traditional cut and fold methods, method 1 and 2, but with shallow cuts and folds, which will only occupy the margin space of your book. I kept the most important piece of advice when choosing a book for your project until the end. That is, to consider how much time you want to spend on a project and how detailed the subject of the pattern is. If you do not want to spend too much time on a project, use a book which doesn't have a huge amount of pages, but which still fulfills all the requirements mentioned earlier. The time spent on a project will increase with every page of the book, Beware, however, that for complex patterns, it means that you may lose some details of the depicted subject. Therefore, there is a trade-off between the time and the quality of your result. My recommendation is to use a book with a higher number of pages for complex patterns, meaning 400 pages or more. Since the length of the project also depends on the complexity of the pattern itself, it means that there might be a big difference between the time spent on a basic pattern compared to a complex one. All my patterns are graded on a scale from 1 for beginner to 5 for expert. This way, you will know if a pattern will be faster to make or if it will take longer. Be creative and mark cut fold and enjoy your book with Nail It!